In this video, we're going to look at conjunctions. So, what are conjunctions? Well, conjunctions are one of the nine parts of speech, and here they are in alphabetical order. The one we're looking at today is conjunctions. Here's a definition for conjunctions. Conjunctions are words used to connect words, phrases or clauses. So here are three common conjunctions, and, or and but. So let's see how they connect words. She likes skiing and rowing. In this sentence, and is a conjunction and it connects the words skiing and rowing. Here's another example. You can stay or leave. Or is our conjunction, and it connects the words stay and leave. One more example. The dog was big but friendly. Or but is our conjunction, and it connects the words big and friendly. Okay, let's get rid of that for now. Let's now see how conjunctions can join phrases. Tell me after dinner or in the morning. Well, our conjunction is or, and it connects the phrase after dinner and the phrase in the morning. Let's do another example. She can sing like a rock star and dance like a ballerina. Well, and is our conjunction and it joins the phrase sing like a rock star and the phrase dance like a ballerina. And finally, let's see how conjunctions join clauses. He stole the painting after John left, but before Susan gave her speech. Well, our conjunction is but. After John left is a clause. Before Susan gave her speech is a clause and the conjunction joins them. Here is another example. He is planning to steal the painting and he intends to sell it in New York. So, and is our conjunction. And it joins the clause, he is planning to steal the painting, and the clause, he intends to sell it in New York. Look at these clauses though. These are independent clauses. That means that they could stand alone as sentences. And when a conjunction joins two independent clauses like this, the conjunction is preceded by a comma. A little more on that later. OK, let's clear some space. So far, we've looked at the conjunctions and, but and or. And these are called coordinating conjunctions or coordinate conjunctions. But there are more than three coordinating conjunctions. There are, in fact, seven. And here they are. Here's a definition for coordinating conjunction. Coordinating conjunctions join like with like. Before we examine that, it's worth saying that the coordinating conjunctions can be remembered with the mnemonic fanboys. OK. What do we mean by like with like? Well, here is an example. Ned is a fast but unmotivated horse. But is our conjunction. And look, the word but has joined two adjectives. Let's look at another example. He eats apples and grass. And is the coordinating conjunction. And this time it's joined two nouns. So coordinating conjunctions join like with like. In the first one, it's two adjectives. In the second one, it's two nouns. Let's look at another example. He will win the race or he will give up quickly. Well, or is our coordinating conjunction. And this time, it's joined two independent clauses. So like with like. And notice that there is a comma before the or, because that's what you do when a coordinating conjunction joins two independent clauses. The key point here is that it's like with like. 
Before we move on to the next type of conjunction, we haven't quite finished with coordinating conjunctions. Look at these. Do you know what these are? Of course you do. Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Well, let's write that out. Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Our coordinating conjunction is and. Only this time it doesn't sit between two things. It is sitting at the end of a list. And when and or any coordinating conjunction, joins three or more items, and in this case it's four, then you have a decision to make. Do you put a comma before it or not? Generally, Brits do not put a comma before the and. But generally, Americans do. And some Brits do as well. In fact, this is called a serial comma but it's also called an Oxford comma, after the Oxford University Press. But as a rule, Americans tend to use this serial comma, and Brits don't. Let's just hammer this point. Fish, chips and peas. That is how most Brits would write it. Notice there is no comma. Burger, shake and fries. This is how most Americans would write it. Notice there is a comma. This only applies when a coordinating conjunction is used in a list of three or more things. OK, that's enough about coordinating conjunctions. Let's move on to the next type of conjunction, subordinating conjunctions. Here are some examples. After, although, if, since, until, because... And there are lots more, and you can see a list of them on the website. Here is a definition. Subordinating conjunctions join subordinate clauses to main clauses. Let's look at an example. We will wait here until the rain stops. Well, until is our subordinating conjunction, and it sits inside a subordinate clause. And it joins it to the main clause. So a subordinating conjunction joins the clauses. Here is another example. People are more violently opposed to fur than leather because it is safer to harass rich women than motorcycle gangs. Well, because is our subordinating conjunction and it sits inside the subordinate clause. And it links the subordinate clause to the main clause. It joins the clauses. OK, there's one more thing to say about subordinating conjunctions. They don't always follow the main clause. Sometimes they're in front of the main clause. Look at this example. When the rain stops, we will start climbing. OK, when is our subordinating conjunction? And it sits inside the subordinate clause and it links it to the main clause. Usually, when a sentence starts with a subordinate clause like this, it is normal to put a comma after the subordinate clause to show where the main clause starts. There is more about that on the website. OK, that's everything about subordinate clauses. Let's move on to the last type of conjunction, correlative conjunctions. Some examples, either, or, neither, nor, not only, but also. These are by far the three most common correlative conjunctions. Let's look at a definition. Correlative conjunctions come in pairs to join alternatives or equal elements. Okay, let's see what that means. You can either take it or leave it. So either or is our correlative conjunction. And it is linking two alternatives. Take it or leave it. Let's look at another example. It is not only unfair but also illegal. So not only but also is our correlative conjunction. This time it's joining two equal elements. There's something else we should say about correlative conjunctions. 
Remember how coordinating conjunctions join like with like? Well, the same is true for correlative conjunctions. In this example, there is an adjective after each part of the correlative conjunction. And in the top example, there are verbs after each part. When you use the same part of speech after a correlative conjunction, your sentence is said to be parallel. So the top example can be described as parallel because each part of the correlative conjunction is followed by a phrase starting with a verb. Let's examine this idea a little bit more. To raise funds, John either sold his watch or his kayak. Either or is our correlative conjunction. This example is not parallel. Look, a verb follows either, but a noun phrase, his kayak, follows or. So this is wrong. Let's correct the example. To raise funds, John sold either his watch or his kayak. This time, his watch, a noun phrase, follows either, and his kayak, a noun phrase, follows or. This one is parallel. This is correct. That is everything we're going to say about correlative conjunctions, and it ends this video on conjunctions. But before we go, I want to leave you with this slide. It is a summary of everything. Coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions, and correlative conjunctions. You can pause this video here to remind yourself of the content we've covered. Thanks for watching.